to the HCG Diet Interviews with Everyday People. I have Becky with me today. Today is a special um, interview specifically about the P3 to Life program um, for Phase 3 after HCG, which you can find more details about at p3tolife.com. And Becky, she's going to share her success story with following the program today. We're going to get all the details from her. I feel like this is a really important way to show you guys whether or not it's something worth trying because... I could talk till I'm blue in the face, but since I created it, I figure, well, of course I'm going to say it's good, you know, so how can you believe that? So that's why I wanted to bring real people who have followed it. They, they've just, they've seen how they can make it work for themselves. And also what's nice about it too, is that pretty much every person I speak with um, makes a tweak here and there, or you find out their lifestyle and how they make it fit into their life. Um, some people are retired, some people work full time, just all those different things. So, um, so anyway, thanks for being with me today, Becky. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Oh, well, so tell us, um, we're just going to, we might talk a little bit about HCG at the end if we have time, but um, since we're focusing on the whole P3 to Life program, tell me what your biggest concerns were with going into P3. Well, gaining weight back quickly. I was reading and listening to a lot of other people's blogs and things and just said how quickly they would put weight back on just even adding little things so i honestly didn't even want to get off p2 because i was so worried about it yeah and that's actually what a lot of people say too like they're like i don't want to get off p2 i'm scared you know because it's just there's so many unknowns so you you were reading online and other people like actually were experiencing like fairly quick weight gain in some cases in p3 Yes, absolutely. And I had a friend that scared me. She had done it years ago and a couple rounds and said that every time, every time she ever did a P3, she always gained. And just to prepare me for it, I was going to gain and yeah. be careful. Be so, and she always had to do a steak day. So, gotcha. which was good and bad. I thought I always have that in the back of my head. If, you know, if this doesn't work, your program doesn't work, I can do a steak day. Right. But I never had to. I never had to even do one. So. That is awesome. That is so awesome. So, um, so and like were these people that were um, having trouble with gaining? Because I know that it's a common problem. Did it seem like they were trying, though, to stabilize or just being totally yes. careless? No, yes. Like they were trying slowly to add things into and just... Um, gotcha. Just every little thing, just like one extra glass of... I'm not sure what exactly yeah. made her during that, but yeah. maybe a fruit or something. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so there. So I guess I was just thinking that just shows because I had actually, I you know, because I did this way after I did P3, of course, years ago myself, and so I've learned a lot in that time. And and I too would have struggles with having to do steak days because, yeah, it was like, well, I'm eating low carb and I was trying, but there is so much lack of information out there even though we try our best and so sometimes things can backfire but you don't know why you know so yeah yeah well good um so there was that and then you also mentioned something about you had a concern with going back to old eating habits too after yes too. yes um well i knew i'm kind of an all or nothing person and i was actually going into p3 at one of the busiest times work-wise, sports-wise with my kids. And um, I was just worried that I would try what in the past, what I would do was try not to, you know, eat thinking that was good for me not to eat all day and then be so hungry and stressed out running everybody around that I just would grab anything. And um, I knew that I had to be prepared that I did know about myself, but yeah. um, I was worried about adding every little thing. In fact, even looking through some of your recipes, I was like, ooh, a little bit of butter, I don't know. Or, you yeah. Know. <laughs> and I just was faithful with how you had it, and I thought, I will just give it a try, and, and it worked wonderfully. That's good. Yeah, I actually, a lot of the interviews I've had, if you guys are, if you've listened to any of the other Phase 3 interviews, you'll this will be a reoccurring theme where people are like, I was kind of hesitant when I saw this. Yeah. Or this ingredient or this much food and I thought I don't know well, okay I'm just gonna trust it and then it worked out really well you know so so props to you for taking the chance even though you weren't sure <laughs> so well tell me um why basically in a nutshell why was the phase three to life program valuable for you overall 
Oh, gosh. It was valuable for a lot of reasons. One, um, the weight law. I mean, just being able to maintain was huge. But in the bigger picture, it's it really helped me change some life habits. And I mean, I'm still not 100% perfect. But um, like I said, I would go back to old habits of not eating. It, it taught me that, oh, I can eat. I can sit down and eat with my family. Um, and have a good portion of food and not just pick pick at a little chicken breast or something. Yeah. And yeah. it helped me try new foods. I actually have a lot of new foods that I never even knew I liked. And then last, it, I never even knew that I liked to cook so much. And I actually find it kind of therapeutic. So, Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, That's and your videos were very, very helpful, even all your tutorials. Um, which at first I thought, oh, I really didn't need to see the ice cube tray video and I'd watch it and then it was actually very helpful. So all, cool. of, them, all of them were. That's good. Yeah, it's funny. I think some of those were kind of like, they weren't like the main meat of the program, like you said, some of those video tutorials. But yeah, and I think initially I too was like, Does, do people even really need these? But I thought, well, you know what, if someone doesn't need them, then they don't need to watch them. And then if they and if they find them useful, I think there was things that I discovered along the way that were that I didn't actually know. So I thought, well, if I didn't know it, there's probably some people out there who don't know it. So, you know, well, they were all very helpful. I would suggest everybody watch all of them. Yeah, just maybe over time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Cool. <laughs> And then you also had mentioned, too, that you hadn't thought about adding um, macros and calories back slowly and gradually. So you have time to adjust. So that that was kind of a newer thought to you. Too. Oh, huge. And it was kind of a light bulb moment where I thought, why didn't I ever think of that before when I've ever dieted in the past? Yeah. Because I would always go back to that all or nothing material. Either I'm good or I'm bad. And right. I never thought it makes so much sense to yeah. yep, slowly add it in that you cannot never have it, but just slowly add different food groups in. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree that I didn't really know that either. Actually, it was kind of when I had um, been doing my various HCG interviews, you know, the last few years and kind of every time someone would um, be someone who had been really successful in phase three on their own, I would ask them like, well, what did you do? And pretty much by and large, they would all tell me like, well, I increased my gra my calories gradually. And I'm like, oh, interesting, you know. And then when I was researching, <laughs> designing the program, it, it's a real thing. It's called reverse dieting. It's, you know, it's a, it's, I didn't make it up, you know, it's like, it's a real thing. So. Well, and uh, it makes so much sense now. Sense. Yeah. I thought about it. I guess because I always thought I have to be on the diet, the diet, you know. Right. And then until you break. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. Well, what did you feel like um, the program provided for you that you wouldn't have had if you had done P3 on your own? Well, I know for sure if I would have found that, I would have continued with just bland chicken breast and broccoli. Um, kind of my go-to, just pro I probably would have kept trying P2 without the HCG, but gotcha. Um, just was like more until I just couldn't take it anymore and got so bored of it. And then I'd cave in. And then <laughs> just just something something I probably shouldn't have. Like yeah, a not cake. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that is one of a lot of the women have said that same thing that um, so many of us have felt like it was either or like you could pretty much only eat like you said, boring bland foods and chicken breast and broccoli or anything else that you ended up eating would be basically something that wouldn't allow you to maintain and it's felt like those were our only two choices you know before this so yeah oh okay so i also want to bring out what you wrote here when in your notes to me you said um also that eating to hunger that you didn't mm -hmm. eat fat before and you learned about spices um and and you already mentioned that you enjoy cooking um, so those were also different things for you. How about the eating to hunger thing? Could you maybe talk about that for a minute? Well, I, and again, when I would watch the success stories that you've shared and people say, listen to your body, eat to hunger. Um, I did, um, I have all of your workbooks, which were very helpful. And I did, um, read the weight loss, uh, apocalypse book yeah, also. It is and as I read it, I thought eat to hunger. I don't 
like I, I didn't get listened to your body. I thought, yeah. oh, like, what does that mean? I don't understand. But coming off the HCG, I, the program really helped me. In fact, I even took notes. I have it in my cookbook. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, oh, this, I ate too much of this. Don't do that next time. Don't eat so much next time. Yeah. And, um, or if I got hungry, I would maybe change and have some of my dinner protein as a snack on my way home, or if I knew it was going to be a really late night before I could eat dinner, I would um, thoughtfully do that ahead of time, take a little bit of my protein or some of my vegetables from the dinner or the lunch and save it and kind of spread it out. Cool. That's good. And then how would you know, um, because like you said, sometimes before you start trying to do that, you're like, yeah, I don't get it. Like, what does that even mean? (laughs) Um, So how did you know when you felt like you said you took notes when you ate too much or you overdid it? What was the feeling? Like, how did you feel? Oh, just bloated and pain. Just a, just Just a little, you know, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Gotcha. So, you know, he'd overdone it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, And before, like, cause I've even had people, um, emailing me on the program saying like, kind of similar, like, Hey, I'm getting full should I force myself to eat all of it anyway? Um, and so I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah, definitely let your body be the judge. And then like in some cases, like you said, some days you might be hungrier and actually need more or just maybe need it at a different time of day or earlier. So that was smart of you splitting your meal up, you know, and having some of it earlier. Um, yeah, but then also the overly full feeling. I always know that too for myself. I've learned like, there's a certain feeling like you said it gets uncomfortable and you realize like, okay, that's not a normal way to feel when I'm done eating. And yeah, so I try just... to avoid that next time. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds silly even to say that I, I wrote it down, but just so I know for next time, cause I, I, I'm in a hurry. Yeah. I'm always in a hurry. Well, at that time I was in a hurry and yeah. you yeah. kind of sh- sometimes shovel it <laughs> and shovel your food in. And that, that's that true. helped me too, like slow down and cool. Relax with them. That's good. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you have this experience or not, but I just in regular maintenance for me, um, I do know if I, if I get overly full, like at dinner or something with something, and this isn't like, I can get comfortably full and it's fine for my weight, but if I get like uncomfortably full, I will have a gain on the scale the next day. And I, I kind of already know that that will happen. And then I can, you know, get my corrected or whatever, but, um, I have kind of started to see that pattern. So, so your body actually really can tell you, you know, and, and I feel sluggish instead of feeling energized from the meal, I would just feel sluggish. Like, Oh, I don't want to do anything now. I just want to go lay on the couch. (laughs) Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, so how about with correction days now? Cause this is another big one. People are afraid of having to do them. Although I have to be honest, you guys and say they're not, they're nothing to be afraid of. So I've corrected many, many a time in the past five years of maintaining, you're going to have to do it on occasion because nobody's mm-hmm. going to eat perfect. I do not eat perfect every single day. So you don't have to be afraid of them, but it's ideally the whole point is to stabilize and you don't want to be having it constantly. Cause that means something's amiss if you're constantly having to make correction days. Right? So with that said, um, with your experience following the program, did you have to do any correction days? During the three weeks of the P3, I didn't do one correction day. But like I said, it was a mental, I thought, well, I will try everything she has on here. And if I need to do one, I, it's there. I know I can go back to it. And, and I never had to. Now, we recently went on a vacation and I came back and gained um, not as much. I was actually happy I didn't gain as much as I thought I would have. Um, yeah, but I did try to like, be very conscious of, of what I was eating because it was right on week four. Gotcha. When we went on vacation. Can you share more yeah. about that? Like how much you gained and like how you fixed it and all that? Yeah, I, I had only gained um, two and a half pounds, but it was more, like I said, I hadn't, I didn't gain at all during the P3. So, um, so instead of panicking and doing the steak day, I just went back to some of your week one recipes, which I loved anyways. And I was planning on, I'm continuing with all of your recipes, um, for life. So I just made sure that I went back to, um, the ones with your calories and macros that you already had laid out for week one. So I did, uh, and that only took two or three days and I dropped that weight. Great. That's awesome. That is really good. Yeah. And yeah. it's like you said that you didn't panic. Um, do you think in the past, 
like without kind of going through this that you might have and what would you oh have done? I would have yep I would have and just said oh well just continue I, I already blew it I might as well just go ahead and go out for ice cream with my family or something I know isn't that weird how we do that <laughs> yeah like I'm either failing or succeeding so and I did it and I thought well I'll give myself a week and if that doesn't work then I'll do the state day but like it was two or three days and it was already off I was so happy that is so great and nice. I didn't feel deprived I didn't feel like I had to starve myself or right eat right. the boiled chicken breast and broccoli right. yeah you were still eating tasty meals right mm -hmm. like variety. yeah awesome that is really great to hear I know I appreciated that you had said um something about what I think it was in one of the fasting videos I think um about how just that when you gain a couple pounds or a few pounds in a few in a couple days it's it's not typically all fat and so in, in the same way, just like when you do a steak day, you lose a few pounds, but that's also yep. not all fat. Um, yeah. And that, that kind of helped click something for you. It did. When I watched that video, um, and I think I even watched it before I went on P3. Yeah. Um, maybe, and I might have even been at a stall in HCG, but I thought, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You can't gain five pounds of fat overnight. Right. So just like you can't expect to lose lose it overnight either that it's mostly water yeah water and did you feel like um having that like knowledge now like the lo the logistics of it helped you mentally i feel like it took a pressure off me actually um a pressure that okay it might take a couple days it's okay you know yeah. that's good because have... we get impatient right we're like no i gain i want it off now <laughs> yeah in fact and i know some people don't like to weigh every day but i'm finding that Wayne every day is keeping me accountable, but not in the pressure way that it used to. Um, I would actually avoid the scale before, um, which would kind of tell me, okay, you know you're not making good food choices. That's why you're avoiding the scale. So now if I do, I'll just say, I know I maybe made a bad choice, but I'm still going to get on. So, And it's usually not as bad as I think it's going to be. That's cool. So. Which is true. Like you said, sometimes if you, if you don't weigh and you don't know it's not as bad as you think it is, then like you said, we'll, we'll do that other extreme thing where we're like, well, then forget it. I'll just, I'm not obviously in the succeeding space right now, so I'll just eat whatever we want for a while. And when maybe the correction could have been very small if you had weighed and known, huh? Yes, yeah. I agree. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. And I really did like how you said that you, when you came back, you said you weren't pl planning on losing the two and a half pounds um, so quickly, which took that pressure off, like you said. Um, so I just like that reasonable approach to it because when you take that pressure off, it, it allows you to like, you know, be content, you know, while you're doing that process. Like it's kind of in the background, like, okay, this is what I'm doing this week, you know, to, to achieve this, this goal, this fix, this little thing, but then you can kind of still go on with your regular daily life and not be completely obsessed with it or putting, like you said, so much pressure on yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you if it's okay about the whole vacation thing, because people, um, they want to know, and, and I have a module on that in the P3 to life program, you guys. And, and I think she, she watched that and utilized some of it. So how did you approach going on vacation? Now you did this at the end of phase three, which was really nice that yeah. it worked out that way. Well, I had it all planned out because I could have honestly kept going on HCG, but I knew, um, and I went back and forth in my head. I thought, well, if, if I stop right before vacation and, and can't put everything into P3 that I want to, I know that I'll gain it back. So I did stop and your video, um, you had just, it's like everything just seemed to align at the perfect time because you had just uploaded the traveling video cool. to P3. Um, and that was very helpful. I made sure to pack some snacks um, the epic bars, which are like a beef stick, yes, that was I've seen those, seen them. Um, I did have some nuts, but I feel like for me right now that I can't control the portions on that, and I don't like that out of control feeling. Um, me too. Which wasn't something that was a trigger food before, but for some yeah. reason it is for me right now. So yeah. I've just recently decided, yeah, don't put a bat whole bag of nuts in my bag, <laughs> which might part of the game because I felt like I ate pretty healthy. In fact, yeah. um, 
being prepared and then making sure um, if we were at a restaurant, because we ate out a lot, but I just had salads or um, some of the hamburgers without the bun, and I even had avocado and bacon on them, so I didn't feel okay. deprived at all. That's great. Um, but I didn't realize how much, because we went with friends, but just how much um, everything revolves <laughs> around food, and it didn't. Um, I wasn't even tempted. We went to like some of the world's best cupcake stores and that yeah. kind of thing. And it didn't even look good to me, which is a shock because I feel like I'm a sugar addict. Really? So, Why do you so think I, it felt different for you? Like what, what kind of helped you feel different, do you think? I yeah. think part of it is, well, I knew how good your food is from yeah. the P3 recipes. Um, and that my food doesn't have to be bland and it was okay to have a, I would have never had a hamburger before, but I probably would have had a cupcake, gotcha. but that was filling for me and cool. that I would, um, and being prepared, making sure that I didn't get too hungry. Cool. So having the snacks was, was helpful. And then just, I don't know, it just didn't even look appetizing. Yeah. Probably just have been eating clean now so long that yeah. you just don't yeah. need it. That's the nice thing, you know, for any of you guys out there who are sugar addicts also, because I'm also the same thing. Um, when you initially get off sugar, it's like really hard. <laughs> if you're doing it during phase two, it's really hard. But um, but like hopefully what can keep you guys sane is realizing that um, the, the cravings do go away. Like your body flushes out and it stops screaming for the stuff you used to eat. And it, it does actually become a lot more doable like, to just live that way. The only thing, and I mentioned this to you, was um, I did miss my P3 smoothies because I couldn't bring those on vacation with me. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and I, I think I emailed that in a question to you, and you had suggested doing um, some zucchini chocolate muffins or a travel type mug mug muffin yeah. something. And I wish I would have planned ahead and done that. I think that would have been helpful. But. Gotcha. So make some of the ones that you could kind of take with you. How long were you gone? Was it like an airplane thing or a driving thing? Yep. We were on an airplane and we were only gone for four days. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it wasn't too long, but yeah. No, I agree. I miss my smoothies too. When I, when I go out of town, like if we're driving, I, I actually do bring my Vitamix. <laughs> these days but yeah if you're flying I think I, actually I think I did one time we had to go live somewhere for like a whole month and I did pack my Vitamix in my luggage <laughs> but like for a shorter trip I probably wouldn't but <laughs> that's funny in fact the other day I took the kids to the movies and um, and I did get them popcorn so I didn't feel like I was being too sneaky but I did make um one of the smoothies and I just put it in a Yeti cup the Yeti ones, okay. and it stayed cool okay. the whole entire, the whole entire time. So really? I was able to just slowly enjoy it. Oh, I'm gonna have to look and that again, up. So it just keeps it really cold. I don't know if I've actually seen that. It's like a little tumbler of some sort with a yeah. like insulated. Yeah. Yes, cool. the Yetis. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So overall, like with the smoothies, like you you enjoyed those for your desserts, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very filling. In fact, that I had to make notes on some of those sometimes. Um, oh, that's right. Because you mentioned that your ice cubes were too small at first. Yes. It took me the first week to figure out that my ice cubes in my fridge, the automatic ice cubes, were making them watery. And from your videos, I thought, why are mine turning out? Mine were only turning out like half the size of yours. Yeah. So I went and just bought an old fashioned ice cube tray that I keep in the fridge and I'll t sometimes pop the ice cubes out and put them in a baggie and just make another batch. And so they're ready to go. Yeah, I but do that too. Actually. <laughs> filling, so filling. And I noticed that it um, is very hydrating too, because I always have to go to the bathroom before I go to bed. And just, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. They're, to pee a lot. It's, it's like a slow water. release yes. too, because it's like yeah. from ice to water, it's like melting yes. in your body. <laughs> <laughs> slow release hydration inside your body i should like feature that on the p3 sales page like, there you go. it's a added benefit yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh funny that's good that's, i'm so glad to hear that you like the smoothies you know what can i ask you what kind of blender that you make yours with and stuff oh it's the nutra 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 like a nutra bullet yes oh really and you even use it with whole large ice cubes and it works 
Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's the ninja. Oh, the ninja. ninja. The okay, because I just, because the ninja yeah. bullet is really not designed for that. And I had a lady, she actually destroyed hers trying to make this oh. with it. <laughs> She's like, yeah, oh. it turned out. I'm buying a Vitamix. <laughs> No, the ninja, and then your video on that was helpful. To, that helped me figure out another thing I was doing wrong good. when I was making them was you have to put the ice cubes in first, so that was helpful. Gotcha, good. Yeah, because it's all about getting that right consistency, right, it's for it to be actually truly pleasurable. Yes, so, yep. That's good. Did you, was one of the smoothies, like, did you have a certain flavor profile that was your favorite of the different flavors? or? Definitely, I like the chocolate with the coconut on top. Yeah. And I was, that was one of, again, I think that's in week one or week two. And I, I was scared one. to put the coconut cream in it. Gotcha. I thought, well, I will. And I even did it um, at night, which I never would have eaten after like six or seven o'clock. And oh. I would even have it late at night. And I thought, okay, if I have a game tomorrow, I won't have that again. And everything always <laughs> turned out fine. That's great. That's really nice and so much of it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, you don't need a lot of it on there, which I, that's, that has really resonated with me too. Like a little, little adds a lot of flavor and it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You can have a little bit of it. So. Right. No, I agree with that so much. I felt like the smoothies, I have actually a lot more, um, recipes in the future to come out with the smoothies and yeah, it's so true. It's surprising how much a little bit of each ingredient. And then what ends up happening is the result is since there's so much ice with the smoothies too, um, they're very low calorie, you know? Very. Yeah, and the snickerdoodle I liked a lot too awesome. with the crumbles on top. Awesome. That was good. Yes, the crumble. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, good. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, let me see. Where are we at here? Oh, so as far as, you know, so people are probably wondering, like, we're talking all about this, but so what are your actual results then following the P3 to Life program with like stabilization, like your weight and your, your, your clothing and all that? What are your results? I've actually lost inches through the P3 and I, I went down two more pounds from my last injection weight. Um, but then pretty much that was during week one. And then I pretty much stabilized there. I would go down a pound and maybe up half a pound, but I never, never gained and never even got close to the, um, well, within the two pounds of the last injection weight. Awesome. But the inches is what I was surprised about. In fact, I just put on a pair of pants um, yesterday that were way too big on me. That I w And I have started exercising, too, yeah. during the P3. So that gotcha. could be part of it as well. But gotcha. That's really great to hear. So, yeah, I think you said you your LAW was 135. And yes. then you went down to 133 for that first Correct. week. Yes. And then stabilize and, and and you guys, it is normal to have your weight fluctuate a little like just because you don't stay at exactly like one number every single day doesn't mean you're not stabilizing. So even in my everyday life, especially with your cycle and, and your, you know, all those different things, there's going to be a little fluctuation from time to time or sodium or whatnot, you know, but overall, usually most people will have like a two to three pound window that they stay between, you know. So and it sounds like for you, you, you kind of only went up a pound or two on occasion and then back down. And then it'd go right back down without a state day, just following the program. Yeah, that is really, really cool. And that is so interesting about the inches too. I'm curious what kind of exercise you, you've been implementing. Well, and I was even losing inches. I, um, the first week I didn't exercise at all. I was actually scared to start exercising yeah. too, because I didn't, I wanted my weight to stabilize. Sure. Yeah. But I've been trying to do more weights. Um, I was always walking. Um, I used to be a runner and oh. at my, but I was getting heavier and heavier and heavier and running wasn't working for me. I just knew I felt something was off. Gotcha. So I started researching hormones and um, as you get older, um, because I'm probably gonna be approaching perimenopausal here pretty soon, I could just tell my hormones and stress was changing and that wasn't working for me anymore. Gotcha. Um, and I've always done a little bit of weights, but I'm gonna focus more on the weights and then doing just stress relieving activities like walking with right. my husband and my dog. And yeah, that's great. With the weights, are you just trying to do that at like your local gym or is there a certain type of yeah. program? Yeah, yeah, I just joined the summer, just for the summer to try it out. Um, I used 
we have stuff in our basement too that I usually awesome. work out with, but I'm noticing I'm really liking um, the community and at the gym and classes. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually the same way. On occasion, I think about getting some equipment here and then I'm like, I just don't think I'm going to do what I do in the group setting, <laughs> you know? Yeah, a little more pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. In a good way. <laughs> yes, exactly, in a good way. So what, what is your current size with your clothing then? You know, I haven't bought any new clothes in a while. I, w I ended um, at a loose eight, but yeah. those, those are too big now. So I gotcha. would say it's probably a six. So you're not an eight. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that is, that's awesome. That's great. Well, how about um, now with the, the portion sizes and the taste of the P3 meals? Um, like, and also with that, with your opinion on that, did, did that change your kind of perception and relationship with food at all? Yes, absolutely. It was huge. Um, like I said, I would have never put fat in any any of my food before. And even salt, um, when you would have a teaspoon of salt, that seemed like so much to me. Yeah. And the funny thing is I thought I was a pretty good cook before, and I didn't realize how bland I was making my food for my family. Oh. <laughs> um, but a teaspoon of salt, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, that's going to be too, way too much. But I put it in and it just added so much flavor. And then all the other spices and um, it was a busy time for me. So I found at my grocery store that cilantro, you could buy that already chopped up or basil or if anything fresh was chopped up. And I thought, you know, when I have more time, I'll do that myself. But this is already um, chopped up and it's better than getting it in the can um, or not the dry, any or, you know or not having any yeah great that's awesome that's really good and then you also mentioned that you used to be a grazer and eat um like every two to three hours so you never really had like a real meal which exactly. you can do right it's like you guys can do that but many people feel like that's the only way they can eat and right. maintain so how was that was, kind of contrast for you how was that different? yeah well um there was a time that that did work well for me but i wasn't i think i was using it as a little bit of overeating or um i never sat down and ate with my family i was always the one feeding them getting ready i was always with them while they were eating but i was catering to them making sure that they had their food and then i guess i would pick i not realize that i probably would pick at their the food when they weren't done or when they were done or, or while i was cooking i would pick at it but i would never just sit down and have a meal with them so um and i didn't realize i was doing that till my daughter with this said oh mom you're having dinner with us right you're eating with us and I never real. I'm like well I always in eat, eat with you she's like no you always just watch us eat and I never realized and that was a big um another light bulb moment that I didn't realize I was doing that and that's what my mom used to do and I didn't realize I was picking up on my mom's habits interesting um, not worrying about myself but catering to everybody else and yeah, and, and thinking like your daughter that now, liked that she, you were eating with them. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, yeah. That's cool. That's interesting. Yeah, I had another, one of my other interviews, Heather, um, she came off of doing keto, actually, doing phase three to life, and um, she's had the same kind of epiphany. Like, I, for the first time in, like, years, I can eat, I get to eat dinner with my family. <laughs> like, I thought, wow, this is sad yeah, that, like, it's been like this for us. <laughs> I know it is. You don't realize you're you're even doing it. But and and I was eating what they were eating. I would make them some extra sides, but we were all eating the same thing. So awesome. That's really that's I love that story. I think that's awesome. Oh, also as far as like the whole portion size thing, did it feel like it was enough food for you? Oh yes, always definitely enough. Um, sometimes I would not want breakfast. Um, and sometimes I would, sometimes I would wake up hungry. Sometimes I wouldn't, I did. Yeah. The only thing I added to the program was I did, um, add the rocket fuel latte nice. in the morning with the coffee and the cacao butter. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I would just have that instead of mm -hmm. maybe a mug muffin or, or, right. or but yeah, being that's prepared. The whole point of listening to your body, like you said. Mm -hmm. And then like, as I said before, I would make notes because they were never not feeling if anything they were 
sometimes too filling my eyes were bigger than right. my stomach. Yeah. Because they do make a lot. Great. It does. Great. Yeah, I was never hungry on any of the recipes. That's awesome. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. And then you had uh, mentioned that that part of that was a little bit surprising too, right? That about with like the volume of the food in relation to the calories. Oh yeah. Especially with week one, because the calories are still pretty low. And okay. I was surprised, um, like the chili that when, in fact, I, I still continue cause I just made it to take to a family gathering that we had. I made the chili, um, to use kind of as a dip, but I ate it just as the meal. And I looked back and it says two servings and I look at it again. I'm like, are you sure it's two servings? Cause it seems like it would be double that. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's kind of what I wanted was for, uh, because you know, the thing is, is with a program like this, um, I don't know how tall you are. Are you? I'm five, four. Okay. You're five, four. Um, I, everybody has a different height and metabolism level. Like you, your metabolism can change over time, but it requires time and work to do that. Um, so some people are kind of having a lower metabolism initially, or if you're really tall, you're going to have a higher metabolism than a short person in general. So it's like when I designed the program, there was no way to make it completely custom tailored to each type of person. Right? So, and, and I had a lot of goals really in the creation of everything, but, um, but one of them was that I really wanted to make sure that, um, kind of no matter who you were, you, the meals would be filling. Um, and I had a lower baseline calorie that it started from and that it gradually raises because it's so easy to add calories, right? It's, right. it's so easy to just add a little of extra food if you need it versus like having something that's going to be too high for half the people using the program. And now you're like, well, if you're not hungry, eat less. And that's just so ambiguous and kind of hard to do. Like, okay, I can't eat all this if I want to, or like, you know, I was like, that's just going to mess with people's heads. So, you know, that was kind of how, how that came about. But that is the neat thing is when you realize when you incorporate like the right ratios of like, of the protein and the fats and then the various low carb vegetables, you can actually get a large meal, um, even with lower calories. It's crazy. You know? Yes. And I think, I don't think there were maybe once or twice that I had, um, two dessert smoothies Yeah, because I might've been hungry or sure. yeah. sometimes I would have it before dinner. Cool. Um, the dessert smoothie instead of after nice. just to kind of tie until dinner so yeah well, that's the nice thing about them is they're pretty hard to get in trouble with so you know you can yeah <laughs> always have it up your sleeve so well can you share a little bit just about your um like your personal life now and how you were how you made the program fit in with that because some people kind of wonder that like with the cooking because there is cooking you guys it's it's it, it's just you know like with whole 30 for instance a lot of people do that that actually is a lot of cooking um so making this transition and i also kind of view it as a training ground um, where, you know, in the future, you may mix it up with those types of meals and just some steamed chicken and broccoli. But the point is, is that I know that a lot of us have thought this, that that's all you could eat. And so this is like kind of the training ground where you're making all these flavorful meals that are nothing like plain chicken and broccoli. And you realize like, oh, I can eat like this and maintain, you know? So yeah, tell us about what your lifestyle is and who you have to take care of and what you have to do and how you fit the program into that. Well, I'm a bit very busy. Um, I, I'm married and I have three kids. Um, my husband works six days a week. So I'm primarily the main cook. Um, he cleans up after dinner, but he's not home. He gets home pretty late. So unless if we want to eat, like right before bedtime, I'm, I'm mostly in charge of the cooking. Okay. Um, and like I said, we were, it was happened to fall when we were gone four nights a week with sporting events, running the kids around. So week one, and I had actually tried some of the recipes before I even started HCG. So I kind of knew that for me, um, my cooking skills were not up to par. So they took, I felt like it took me a little bit longer to just even find the spices in my cabinet and, right. and and I didn't have the right tools. So getting the right tools was helpful. But week one, I went back and forth. I thought, should I batch cook or should I try everyone? And I'm like, no, I'm going to try every recipe. Well, it didn't go over very well. Um, I was making mistakes. I was forgetting to put stuff in. And so for week two and week three, what worked better for me and my family 
was to do the batch cooking. I can't remember if that's yeah, what you the simple family family plan. plan. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I don't think we, we said it yet. You're a full time teacher also, right? Yes. So in I addition work. to husband that works six days a week and having yeah. three children who are in sports after school, you were right. full time or you're a teacher. So yeah. yeah. So for you, obviously your days are just totally full. So yeah, in the yeah. program, you guys, there's an original plan that has more recipes for each week so that you're eating a larger variety of recipes and you don't eat them as much. But then we have the simplified plan for every week so that for working people, you know, or people who just don't mind eating the same thing a few days in a row and such, um, there's less recipes and you just make larger batches of them. So that's what you ended up doing for week two and three. Yes, and I loved it. That worked oh. really well on Sundays. I would plan it out. And I didn't cook everything on Sunday, but I would make sure to have everything ready, chopped up. I would even put all my spices in a baggie and label it ready to go so that when I got home from work, I could just throw it all together. Um, and I never got sick of having the dinner for lunch or having the same lunches three days in a row. I actually look forward to it cool. because they were so good. And now I'm looking forward to going back and making some of the other recipes that I didn't get to make during week two and week three. Good. Yeah. And you know, since you're part of my original beta group, um, I have a, a week four recipes and those are almost ready to put up. Oh, on I can't the wait. Yeah, oh, no, I'm literally we're just doing your final edits. Yeah. Oh, so, yay. Yeah, yay. so that'll be fun. And there's some good ones in there. Yeah. So I love that you, because I, um, I've always, I learned so much, honestly, from you guys about like your prepping ideas. And I loved that you, you did that. Like you said, even if you didn't cook all the food on your prep day, you, you cut up the vegetables still yes. so that they were, yep. you could just like then toss it in a pan or whatever, right? Right. And I had a mini chopper, so I thought, well, if I have the chopper out um, that's already dicing my onions, I might as well use it to throw the cilantro in there or the celery or whatever whatever yeah. else I was chopping up. And then I would marinate all my meats. I had anything that needed marinated. I would have that marinated and in a baggie ready to go. So nice. when I got home, I could just throw it on the grill or put it in the oven or... Great. That's awesome. And I loved the idea about the spices in a baggie. So you would just like put all the spices from the recipe and then just put what that recipe was on it. And then, have, and then, <laughs> then you wouldn't have to be pulling out your spice bottles every night. Right. I didn't realize how um, complicated my spice cupboard was that I couldn't find. It took me, I mean, it seems really silly because I know putting spices in doesn't take that long, but it would take me forever to find, oh, where did I put that spice down? I'd have to move them all around again. So yeah, yeah that was really helpful. That made, I don't know why that, that helped me save a lot of time. And I think that's actually a really great idea because a lot of times in a lot of recipes, there's you know, there might be a unique spice, but then there's also a lot of things that might be the same, like the salt or or the pe or paprika, for instance, or garlic powder. I mean, those are frequently used, so it's like that makes sense. You could do multiple baggies probably, and instead of having to pull it in and out, mm -hmm. like you said, find it five times in a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I found, I learned from week one that I would make mistakes. Then I would, you know, go back and look at the recipe again after I was eating the meal and think, oh shoot, I forgot to even put that one in there. Gotcha. Yeah, so this way you kind of had it all together, huh? Yeah, and I and on Sundays, and I would just listen to um, some podcast or YouTube videos while I was cooking. And like I said, I found it very relaxing and um, enjoyable. In fact, the other day my son made me a cookbook stand because he's like, Mom, you are always cooking now. <laughs> but but he made that because he knew that I'm enjoying that. So That's it's not the prettiest crazy. thing, but it's it makes me happy seeing it up on my counter. Oh, so. what did he make it? Is it like wood or something? Or? Just wood that he nailed together oh. and, and then spray painted it. Oh, that's so, how, could you mind if I ask how old he is? He's nine. Oh, that is so thoughtful. Yeah. I love yeah. that. My son is seven. Uh, yeah, he's starting to think about things like that, too. Like there's this diet soda that I that I drink on occasion, and um, so when my husband and him go grocery shopping like on occasion without me there, like he'll remind my husband that uh, like let's get mom's diet soda like because my husband's not paying attention remember he'll like let's get mom's little diet soda and he'll bring it home and it's because he thought of it because he knows that I like to uh, get it when I go. Yeah, I know. and it's another um thing that I didn't realize again it kind of confirmed with me I didn't realize how much my kids were picking up on 
what I was always doing and in my habits. So. Gotcha. Yeah, because there's like a lot of things that are probably unspoken, but like you said, they're learning it by watching, and then now when it changes, all of a sudden they actually say something out loud, and you're like, oh, I didn't right. realize. Oh, right. As you guys noticed that, yeah. That's true. Oh, that's a really cool story. So yeah, those are really great prep tips. Now, when you, I'm just curious, do you grocery shop the same day that you cook or a different day? No. And I think in one of your videos, I never realized um, you had mentioned how you were exhausted when you get home. And and I thought, well, that seems silly, but I am. I realized the same thing for me. I don't know if it's mentally, not so much physically, but just yeah. like I don't want to be done. So I, I do have to make sure that I have food ready when I'm either before I go or when I come home gotcha. uh, because Otherwise, I'll just be popping stuff in my mouth. Um, right. But no, I like to do that the, either the day before, a couple days before. Yeah. And then do the prepping later. Then you can start fresh. And I love how you said you'll listen to like a podcast or YouTube videos while you cook and kind of make it almost just like this, like this thing you can look forward to now. Instead I of like do. A surgery. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And I hardly yeah. watch any TV as it is. But I, yeah, I, I just find that as my relaxing time and like, oh, I can't wait to get home and cook and then see that next yeah. <laughs> YouTube then or your I, six stories I watch those over and over. Cool. Yeah, I love that. I do the same thing with um, when I go to CrossFit because, you know, there's the travel time and all that. And it's like sometimes you might consider that like a bummer part of it that could put you off. But I listen to podcasts also when I drive. And that's really the only time I listen to podcasts is when I'm driving so for me, it's like, it, I look forward to it. It's almost like an excuse for me to want to go in addition because like, well, oh, then I also get to do something else enjoyable that I like, you know? Mm -hmm. Great. So yeah, that's awesome. Just as far as just real quick here about with your, with your HCG journey, um, how many pounds did you lose by the way? This was your first round, right? I was just, yes, this is the, my first round that I did. I lost 30 pounds. Nice. And 28 inches, but I've even, like I said, I've lost, well, two more pounds than that since P3 and um, probably three to four more inches since then. That's awesome. That's great. You know what I appreciated? You said something about kind of the pace of the HCG, of pursuing your HCG journey that you kind of decided on in your head after kind of learning more. Would you speak to that for a minute? Well, I was first, um, I was kind of at a really low point with myself and very frustrated because I had tried um, fast metabolism diet and I had a friend do it with me and she loses 20 and I'd only lose four or five and I was like fouled it perfectly. So I knew, I knew something was off with me um, in my metabolism yeah. um, and I was very frustrated. Um, we had just come back from a spring vacation and I was just frust I just felt yucky about myself and frustrated or no, we were getting ready to go and I was frustrated with myself. So I thought, well, I want to hurry up and lose all this weight before we go and um, somewhere warm and have to be in a bathing suit. And so I called the doctor's office and they didn't call me back right away. And that's when I found you and I started um, watching your videos and reading your blogs and um, I decided that I was going to wait and, and someone's success story, that was one of their um, key things they said is don't rush into it. Make sure you research it and make sure you have it planned out um, because I'd, I wouldn't have realized that P3, you can't just go back to your normal eating habits. I didn't realize that until watching some of your videos. So when the doctor's office finally called me, I told them, well, I'm, I'm all set, and I decided, I purchased the HCG online, but I decided to wait until actually after we got back from our spring vacation because I knew that I wanted to have some drinks and some good food while we were there. So yeah. I didn't rush into it, and I think that was huge for me. Otherwise, I feel like I probably would have done the HCG and then came back from spring vacation and went right back to my old eating habits. So I felt like it was... Um, it's really taught me a lot about myself and going back to listening to your body and not to rush things and, and to plan things out, plan things out. Right. I know that's what I have to do. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And especially because like you making, like you learning that and like thinking that to yourself, you had to make the decision then to go on your, it's, I think if I have this right, you had to make the decision to go on your vacation, not, 
thinner the way you wanted to be, right? Correct. Initially. So you Correct. had to do that, even though that's what all emotionally we all want. Like, this is the most important thing, like, now, and so I can feel this way on my trip. But I, th- I think it's so cool that you looked beyond that and realized, like, okay, you know, it's better to be uncomfortable now for a little while so that I can have a longer-term solution, you know? Yes. Yeah, and I'm so glad I did that at the time. Like I said, I didn't feel my best. I felt right. yucky out on the beach, but totally. I'm so glad. I, I'm so thankful I did it that way now because I know when summer would have came, I I would have been still struggling yeah. and not in the place that I'm at right now. Yeah. No, thank you so much for sharing that because I think like a lot of us women, we have to do that more. Like it's so hard yeah. to, to do it. It's just hard to do it because you just want so bad to like – be in the body that you feel good about. And so to put it off purposefully is just really hard to do. But I feel like when people do that and make the choice based on what's going to logically work and like for the willpower thing and all of that, what's going to make more sense than you do, then you can actually make your results last and then you'll have plenty of vacations in the future, you know, to have the body the way you want it to be. So yeah. And that actually is when I started some of the P3 then instead, some of your oh, recipes yeah. I had got at the time. So I was down, I felt like I was still eating healthy and I did lose a little bit of weight just following Good. your P3 before we left, yeah. but I, it, I felt like it put me in the right head space too. Like I really, I really was focused on more focused than I would have been instead of just the short term. That's good. That's really good to hear. Well, just the last couple questions. Um, was there any positive results from the plan that surprised you? I and mean, we may have talked about them a little already, but just were there things that you weren't expecting or that were surprising to you? Well, I was surprised by some of the meals that I liked. In fact, I think, I don't know if I emailed you that or not, but the one of the curry meals, I wasn't even going to make it because I thought I hated curry. Yeah. Um, and I had tried the spice in something a long time ago, and I didn't like it. But those were actually my favorite recipe cool. for the curry. Awesome. Um, both of the curry ones. And I guess just that I didn't realize I liked cooking. I didn't realize um, how much I could eat and how flavorful my food can be. Um that I was, I guess I didn't realize how much boring food that I was eating and no wonder why I would be, was getting frustrated and just try to find, and that, that I don't have to always get convenience food. I don't miss, um, I was relying a lot on like protein bars or prepackaged meals. Um, I didn't realize that I was doing that, but that as long as I'm planning ahead of time, I can have it already. And it's much more satisfying than those anyways. That's good. Yeah, that was kind of, I I think, I think I have the same thing where I think that is why sometimes we end up going back to eating a lot of things that do make maintenance hard or just not happen because the the healthy food we're eating is just kind of, like you said, not very satisfying or you just get sick of it. So again, it's the either or thing where you're like, well, I either eat this healthy food and then you get sick of it. So then you just go eat all this other stuff and you just, we never realize there's this in-between space. You know, yep. it's like this special in-between space that's actually a marriage of both. And it, you can you can have it exactly. all. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned the curry, too. This keeps also coming up that everyone thinks they're not going to like the curry. And, and I don't know why all of us are not wanting, thinking we don't like the curry. And then they're like, I loved the curry because I decided to just go ahead and give it a try. So that's funny. Yeah, that and the fish tacos were excellent, which I like fish tacos anyways, but those were delicious. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, and I think um, I mentioned that to you, too. My husband takes yeah, leftovers yeah. to work as well, okay. and his coworkers get, they, he said they're salivating at watching really? the meals that he's bringing in. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. So they're good to everybody. That's very they cool. Are. So that was your some of your favorites was the curry and the fish tacos? They, yes. I mean, it is hard to just pinpoint too, but, and then the mashed cauliflower was really one of my favorite sides and the um, butternut squash. Yeah. With the with sides, I would have never thought to even bake it like that. It turned out, yeah. Awesome. I, and, and I'm having fun thinking about other 
ways they can use those sides and yes. meals. Yeah, that's and the cool thing, huh? It gets your wheels turning, right? It's like, oh, okay. Now I can figure yeah. out how to combine this in different ways or, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's great. Um, how about with the, the, so I have, there's a coaching section on the P3 to Life um, members site as well that's separate from the, you know, the actual meal plans and recipes. So was there any portion of the coaching videos that you found helpful? I think that's the one where I, I can't remember if, they were all helpful, but the the one where you about fasting and just that or the steak day yeah. that the steak day um you might not need it. I think we already talked about that. Oh right, yeah, we talked about that. And, yes. Oh, and then you mentioned about the trigger foods too. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. What I wrote. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, yes, I didn't realize. I mean, I knew that I love chocolate and sugar before. But I never thought of it as if something, if to add that in, if it causes you to have um, that reaction in your head where you just can't stop, yeah. then that's a trigger food. And maybe just to stay away from that. Right. And that is always in the back of my mind. And it kind of goes back to the peanuts um, or macadamia nuts that I was eating when I couldn't stop and I didn't realize, um, especially so I had a stressful situation happen this weekend and I just kept eating them out of the can even though I knew I wasn't hungry. Yeah. And that's when I put the lid on and I thought, you know what, I know this, I know I'm not even hungry and I don't like having this out of control feeling. Yeah. So I thought, I'm just not going to buy those for a while. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I think um, once you start to see the contrast between that feeling like you said, you start to notice that you feel out of control because then you start with other foods. You you realize you don't feel out of control, right? Right. And then you're and like, I think oh, that's why we... on vacation, even not having the cupcake that did look really good, but I thought, you know, if I have that, I don't I don't want that feeling of that's all I'm going to have the whole time, and then want more and more. So I didn't yeah. even I didn't even miss not having the taste because I knew. What that if I to. had that taste, yeah, what it would lead to. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, and, and it's true. I do think that we, it becomes easier for us to make those choices because the, the contrast and the feeling that it creates inside is, is so strong. Like you said, you, you know the feeling when you feel in control, when you're eating, you still have access to eating things that you enjoy overall. And so, yeah, then it just makes it so this other stuff is just not worth it, you know? Yeah. And some of it, I feel it can be disguised as healthy food, too. I had another mm -hmm. habit at night where my husband and I would eat Smart Popcorn. Okay. But, um, or Smart Pop. Which I haven't is heard of it, actually. Oil. Oh, it's so it's very good. It's made with olive oil, and it sounds very healthy. Yeah. But it when you eat too much of it, it's not healthy anymore. Right. And I had a bad habit of that. And the smoothies took the place of that. So I kind of mm -hmm. changed. And, and I felt like I, I felt very full on that. And... I can stop on the smoothies where I can't have that popcorn anymore because I know I can't stop it. And <laughs> yeah. A cup might be healthy, and it's not necessarily healthy that they have it in what, what yeah. they have it in. But <laughs> it's, it's just it's true. There's just so many foods that you could just keep eating, you know, and you've just totally yeah. overeaten, like, before you know it, you know. So, plus with the smoothies, we're getting the slow hydration like we talked about. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. it. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad to hear all that. Um, are there just any other closing thoughts for anyone who's considering oh. doing the program, whether or not they should give it a try? Um, well, I think they should definitely give it a definitely give it a try. Um, it it took the stress out of what should I eat, what can I add, because you've already done all that. It's all on there. Um, and you might learn some new things about yourself like I did. I didn't even know that I liked cooking. Um, yeah. And I'm actually, I want to actually take some cooking classes because your videos helped inspire me. Oh, good. <laughs> to maybe get faster at, at some of the prepping. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think anybody coming off HCC, she should definitely, definitely try it. Okay. Um, it worked for me. I just, I was amazed when week two came and we added in more calories. Every day I would get on the scale and I would literally close my eyes thinking, okay, I know I had to gain a pound having all that last night or yesterday. And it went, my, my weight might be down or it might be the same, but it was never up. So that is awesome. it works. 
Yeah. It's funny. I wonder how much um, of like the the feeling that you don't like to cook and then the changing of I, I just wonder how much of that has to do with possibly our negative relationships with food we've had we've had. Uh, yeah. You know, like, like you said, like, thinking, that, like, well, the only way I can eat good food is if I'm going to gain weight. So, of course, we don't want to do that. So then, of course, I'm obviously cooking a plain chicken, breast and broccoli is not fun. <laughs> so, you know, like I wondered right. that, like where we thought and that's why. And then once you realize like, oh, I can make these really creative, interesting meals and not gain weight. I think it almost changes your your mind about cooking and food in general or something. You're right. I never thought Maybe. about it like that either. I just wonder. And, I don't know. It's just because I've had a couple other ladies tell me the same thing. They're like, I didn't even know, like, I wasn't the cook in the family. And now, like, I'm cooking all the time and loving it. And <laughs> it's funny. Aww. Yeah. And if you were to put um, a store-bought meal down in front of me or the meal that I had just made, I'm going to – I. I would truthfully want the meal from your plan that I had just made. I, you know, the love that goes into it and the, it just makes it taste better too. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Okay. Well, last question for you. So what kind of HCG did you use when you were on your round? Injections. Okay, cool. So you did injections and then you mentioned you did it with B12. Was that a separate B12 shot or was it in the mixing liquid? It was in the mix. Gotcha. Cool. And yeah, and you had your 30 pounds and I think you said in 52 days. Yeah. It's actually really good results. That's amazing. It was. Well, I, yeah, it was, I would lose, I lost really, really quickly the first week and then I stalled. Um, but in the closing thoughts that you, I guess I go back to before, but even in the cookbook with your P3 plan, or if people get your workbooks, I find all that very helpful is to journal and take notes on that. Because I thought I was having really long stalls. And then when I would go back and look at my notes that I took and, and kept track of that, it really is only like two days that, or one day. It wasn't that long. Gotcha. Um, but my body kept going in that pattern where then I would lose again quickly. In fact, when I was stopping the HCG, I was on where I was losing a pound a day again. And I almost didn't want to stop. But, but I knew that I wanted to plan for the upcoming vacation that's that we were going on and to do p3 right so that's cool well um that's i that's nice to hear that so tracking with the workbook helped you to kind of just stay aware of what was really going on yes and it continues i'm still tracking um it, you know not my measurements every sure. day yeah. um, my way i do i don't track it but i do weigh myself every day but i yeah. am journaling um yeah. constantly and and even if I have a bad day, like with the macadamia nuts, I'll go and, and write about that or at least, you know, mentally think about, it. okay, so today I didn't feel good with this. What can I do next time? And I think of it as a learning good. instead of get frustrated, where before I would have got frustrated with myself and just given up and said, the right. heck with it. But. Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's funny. Um, with As far as being on phase two, um, and like you said, sometimes when you're not tracking things, thing, it feels longer than it really is. Um, as far as like yes. all, and, and that's so true, you know, we yeah. all get emails sometimes like, oh, I'm in week three and I've only lost 15 <laughs> pounds or, or something like that, you know, and then I'm like, I asked for a few more details and then I, it's like, well, it looks like actually if you're on day, you know, 21 and really your results are from the 20 days because you're on day 21 and then it's this many pounds, it's like, and this is, this is your average per day. And like, that's actually a really good average weight loss per day once right. you break it down. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, your yeah. video on that was very helpful yeah. when I got from it. Yeah, it's like breaking stuff apart, you know. I think it's just, we're just, it's so easy for us to just be negative with ourselves or to go to a negative yeah. place in our life, you know. So it's like you have to kind of learn to pick up that apart. And then you realize once you pick it apart, you're like, oh, that's really not a logical conclusion, what I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> And the big picture, it's still pretty good what I've done so far, you know. Yes, yeah, which goes a long way in helping you to actually stick it out when you can have feel good about what you're doing instead of bad, you know. Mm -hmm. So. And it was very helpful because I would have probably done an apple day or something, and then when I would go back and look at my notes, I thought, oh, I'll just give it another day. I bet it's – and I think you were right. Like sometimes your body just stabilized where you had been at a weight for a while. 
and then it will get over that hump. So yeah, I just yeah. trusted the process. That's good. That's good. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this with me today. Becky. Thank you. Thank you for all your workbooks. And I'm so looking forward to P4 and, and more recipes to come. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so for, and for the rest of you guys, again, if you want to check out the program, all the details are at p3tolife.com. And um, as far as other interviews, like we've had today, I do both now. We have HCG regular success stories where it's just about their whole weight loss journey. And then now I alternate them with um, P3 to life success stories. So for all of the interviews, you can go to hcgchica.com slash success stories. And then if you want to see just P3 to life interviews, um, like if you're already a member or you're thinking about it, um, those are all going to be at p3tolife.com slash interviews. So and any, everyone's going to have access to those. Um, yeah, so that's it. And then if we talked about any like things today, I'll have that in the show notes. Even things like that little tumbler you mentioned for your smoothie. I'll try to find that and put that in the show notes for you guys. Um, those epic bars she mentioned. Like we, we all need like every little tip we can get, you know, so. <laughs> Anyway, all right. Well, have a good rest of your day. All right. Thank you.